Hey folks, welcome back to Magical Diary. Well, um, this is, I guess we're back to Dating Sim Tuesday. Uh, I got uh, one ending in Hot Full Boyfriend. Uh, we gave that a break for now. And uh, let's get back to Magical Diary, because now, now last time I went out to dinner with Damien on a totally not a date, and he took me to this magic restaurant where they had this really suggestive dessert that I'm supposed to put in my mouth and suck gently. Um, and I, of course, I lost every last bit of my shit about that. So anyway, uh, um, let's get started here. I'm going to double up on black and white. Done. Oh, I got Potsdam all week. Good. I got the nice professor. OK. Yay. Detect charm. Ah, cool. Black magic. Yay. White magic. Please make yourself comfortable, little Signets. We have a serious issue to talk about today. Many of you will have learned something about this subject from your parents. Others will know less or nothing at all. Wait, is this going to be sex education? Oh, God. The world you see around you is only the tiniest fraction of all that exists. There are infinite realms with, with bleh, which exist outside of our own space and time. Guess not. Well, it could still be. Yeah. The nearest such realm is that which we call the other world. You may have also heard it called Elfheim, or the Dreaming, or the High Hunting Grounds. There are countless other worlds, but the other world is particularly the realm of this world's shadow. Like a shadow, it is always connected with enough white magic. An adult witch or wizard can travel the spiral gate from anywhere in this world. However, you students must not enter the other world under any circumstances. Can any of you tell me why that is? One hand eagerly shoots up. Yes, Minnie. She stands up. Because the cameras feed on the souls of human children, especially magical children. And when they are drawn to any unwarded human who enters their realm, their realm, it takes them approximately... Okay, thank you, Minnie. Thank you, dear. That will do. Minnie closes her mouth and sits down. The other world is a wonderful place. Magic flows more freely there, and many witches and wizards choose to live there full time. But we are not native to it, and we are not immune to its dangers. Do not attempt to pass the gate. Not even with an adult to guard you. Not even with a powerful spell or artifact to protect you. Not even with a friend who has been there before and told you it's safe, like uh, Damien, possibly? Some of your classmates have other than human heritage, but what is safe for them is not safe for you. Most importantly, if a spirit invites you to the other world, do not accept, no matter what you are promised. All right, cool beans. I am not saying this to frighten you or to challenge you to find a way around my rules. If you disobey, I will not need to punish you because you will be gone. Oh, shit, son. No, let's get back to brighter subjects. We can talk more about the other world later, and I'll bring in some lovely paintings to show you. Okie dokie. Yay. On Thursday morning, all the freshmen are gathered together in the gym. Good morning, my bright young things. Today is a special occasion for all of you. You're going to get to practice what you've learned and try out some spells on each other without the pressure of a test or grades. Oh, sweet. This is an important lesson because in future exams you may come up against other spellcasters. You need to know how to use magic in combat and to avoid how to avoid magic being used on you. Will everyone please team up in twos? There's some jostling and shuffling around. Ellen and Virginia pair off, and I end up standing by Virginia's brother, Donald. Please pay attention before we begin. I want you to take turns casting spells at each other and blocking them. This is not a battle, and you're not trying to defeat each other. Think of it like a game of catch. One of you is the pitcher, and one of you is the catcher. You can only pitch when it's your turn, so defenders must only defend and not attack. Also, please don't interfere with any other pairs. That includes casting spells that tend to be messy. No fireballs or ice storms, please. Target only your partner. I will be on hand to deal with any injuries and accidents. If you hurt yourself, please call for help. I'll be right there. Have fun! Oh boy, fun! I turn to face my partner. Ladies first. 
Um, I'm not sure what to cast. I've never done this before. You can do a push spell, right? Sure, that's easy. All right then, are you ready? Three, two, one. I start to cast the spell, but suddenly a wave of cold sweeps over my body and I can't move. The spell fizzles uncast. Ha! I wasn't sure that would work. Oh. Eh, it'll wear off in a minute. As he said, I unfreeze shortly, but my fingertips are still tingling and sore. Alright, it's my turn now. Are you ready? I suppose. Uno, dos, tres. Dodge. As Donald prepares to cast his spell, I jump to the side. What? I don't feel anything. I guess he missed. What do you call that? Thinking outside of the box? We work together for a while, trading spells back and forth. Then Donald holds up his hands and leans in close to whisper something. I've got a great idea. When I say go, you drop to the floor and cover your eyes. I'm going to cast something over your head. Um, no. No, that that's not cool. Okay. Go. On cue, I duck and cover. There's a whooshing noise and a burst of heat overhead, followed by screams. Donald, what are you doing? Ooh, you're in trouble. Well, your flaming dragon was very impressive. Oh, I missed the fire dragon. I did specifically tell you to avoid large spells. If poor Stumpelda hadn't managed to get out of the way, you would have hurt her badly. Like he cares. This is very disappointing. You've always been so careful in your creativity. Why would you take such a risk? You know what? Screw you, bro. I knew what I was doing. Well, maybe you did, but it's still a bad example for the other students, don't you think? I'm sure you know that there will be a detention for this. Yeah, Donald basically lives in detention. Of course. I'll also have to give you ten demerits. Yeah, well. Try to be good now. Jacob, put Mr. Arius down! She hurries off to deal with someone else. Luckily, there are no major accidents for the rest of the session. Well, that was fun. Bonjour, Miss Cherries. Today I want to talk a bit more about other world creatures in general. Because our worlds are connected, they can cross over just as easily as we can, but in this world, they are not native. They are weakened and bound by their nature, just as we are when we travel the other world. Every spirit in this world must follow a set of rules. Not the same set of rules, though. That would be too simple. Rules of behavior vary depending on the type of creature and the method it used to reach our world. If you cast the summoning spell, you can set some of those rules yourself. Whoa. If you understand the rules that a creature is bound to, you can easily defeat it. Most of you will have heard of vampires being repelled by crosses. That won't work for all vampires, but for some it is an easy weakness to use. In later years, you will study many types of other world creatures to learn this sort of lore. Now to continue with your lessons in white magic. Woohoo! I learned a new spell. Oh, sweet. Hey, it's Saturday. On Saturday morning, the mail and allowances are delivered. What should I do today? Uh, I got some money. I'm going to the mall. What should I do at the mall today? Um... How about the magic store? <clears throat> Wacky glasses. Oh, man. Oh, a tiara. I can get a tiara. Yes, a sparkly crown to make you feel like royalty. Cute plus ten costs thirty dollars. Yeah, sure. Why the hell not? Okay. I'm done. I finish my shopping and join my fellow students to return to Iris Academy. Okay, let me, um, put my tiara on. Oh, isn't that adorable? Done. Okay, well, that was an uneventful week other than Donald, um, wrecking shit. So, I'm gonna take a break, folks, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.